YouTube, Phaser here, um, and today what I've got for you is a Cinema 4D tutorial for lighting, to make like a studio effect lighting. Um, so we're going to jump straight ahead into the tutorial because I'm not sure how long it's going to take, so we're just going to go straight into Cinema 4D. And this is basically what we've got here, um, you can see we've got some nice shadows under these spheres, um, some nice reflections for the uh, softbox there that makes the lighting. Um, <clears throat> and this doesn't have to be for spheres, it can be for like text or anything like that, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but without wasting any more time, I'm just going to go straight ahead and get started. So I'm going to delete these, delete these materials, and we're going to start from scratch. Um, so we're going to go straight ahead, first things first, by adding a floor. Um, and then we're also going to add a background. And what you'll notice is it's these horizon line here. If I render, we're going to get like, oh, sorry, hold on, let me just turn off the render settings there. If I render, we're going to get like two different colors and it's going to look quite crappy. Um, so what you need to do to get rid of this to make it like one solid color, um, but to still be able to get like your shadows and stuff on the floor, is you need to go to the floor, um, right click Cinema 4D tags and add a compositing tag. And then on the compositing tag options here, they're going to turn off self shadowing and turn on the compositing background. And then you'll notice when you render there, when it's at the horizon line, there's nothing that affects it, you know, it still looks absolutely fine. Um, so now we're going to go and start adding some objects. So we're going to add a sphere and we're going to just make sure, like, sort of try and put it on the floor. Um, so that's how that, that looks alright, that'll do. Um, just for a tutorial, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, so we're going to press Ctrl C and then press Ctrl V twice um, to copy and paste the sphere. So we've just got a couple of spheres like I showed you in the uh, example a second ago when we first started. Um, so just move these, try and make it look like, you know, so the gaps are the same size or whatever. Not that you're going to want to do three spheres or something like that, unless you make your own tutorial or something like that on this, but this is just for an example. Um, so we've got our three spheres here. If we render out, you know, you can see three spheres, floor, all looks very fine. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to start by putting some materials on the spheres, so we're going to make a material first, so double click and then, sorry I should have showed you that really, double click here to make a material and double click again and get into the material editor and you want to start by turning off the specular because it, it doesn't need to be there to be honest and turn on the reflection here and then straight away go to the reflection texture and add a fresnel or a fresnel, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that but some people say it differently. Um, and you want to take the brightness down to between sort of 10 and 15 percent, and the same with the mix strength. It doesn't really matter what, as long as it's between sort of 10 and 15. Um, and then make the color whatever color you want to use. So I'm going to start off by making a blue. Um, so we've got the blue there. And to save you doing all that like three or four times, if you want to make more textures, if you hold Control, you can click the color and just drag it across, um, sort of as many times as you want. But we need three for this, so I'm just going to delete those. But hold Control click, hold the click down, when you drag it across let go and a new one appears there. So then you can just double click into this one, make sure you're on colour and change the colour to whatever colour you want. So we're going to do a red now and then we're going to change this one to a black. So we've got our three colours here so if we just add those to the spheres and give that a quick render you'll see we've got the colours there reflected on the black but you know no shadows, No, it looks quite you know, it looks like I could have just photoshopped a red circle and it would look the same. It doesn't look nice um, or it doesn't look 3D or anything like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the lighting. So if you add a plane, and um, what you need to do with the plane is you need to clone the plane. So we need to go to MoGraph and add a cloner um, and drag the plane as a child of the cloner. So click and drag and then wait till the arrow is pointed down and let go. And it's now in the cloner. Um, you'll see it's stacked free here um, but we don't want it that way so we're going to click on the cloner and where it says linear here we're going to change that to grid array um, and it's now made a 3x3x3 three by three by three. so it's got three along three up and then like a stack of three but we only want one sort of layer so change the middle one here change that to one um, and you're just going to get one thing here and then because the uh, the planes are actually too big they've gone into each other so that's why it looks like one solid thing so if you just click on the plane um, and change down the size of the planes so just change them down like that until they get gaps in between so like that I'd say looks alright and then click on the cloner and size up the cloner and then the planes will get bigger but they won't actually fill in the gaps um, so 
We need to make another material now to uh, use for the lighting for this. So we're going to double click here for a new material, double click again, turn off the specular again, and this time we're going to add a luminance. And make sure the color is like a bright white because it's going to be for lighting, obviously. So it'll be a nice bright white. And on the luminance, just leave it as it is for the minute. Um, so then add that to the planes there. Um, and then you want to rotate them because it's going to, otherwise, you're going to have like the bottom of your spheres like round here are going to go really dark when not hitting the light. So if you just put the rotation tool on, rotate it just like a little, uh, maybe like that, move it up slightly and it will move like sort of yeah, just just position it nicely so it's sort of above your objects but in front of them at the same time um, so that's going to be alright so um, if we go on here and render now again you'll see we get some nice reflections from these soft boxes um, but you know it still doesn't look you know as nice as we'd like it to so if you add the global illumination and the ambient occlusion. Uh, mine are already up here because I put them up here, but if you, you'll notice if they're not up there, if you click the effect tab, um, they will be in here. So just add the ambient occlusion and the global illumination. Leave them settings as they are, that'll be fine. Um, close that, and then this is gonna really increase your render time, but if you wanna make something real nice, um, you know, it's, it's better to, to give it the time it needs and make it like really nice rather than sort of take half the time and have half the quality. Um, so you'll see now we've got the shadows under here, it looks a lot more realistic, but it looks quite dark and quite, you know, we've still got quite a lot of dark underneath here. So if we click on this uh, luminance here, on this material, make sure that you're on the luminance tab, and change the brightness up to between 250 and 200, and, uh, between 250 and 300, so I'm gonna do like 280. Um, and then you'll notice when we render again, you can see already a lot brighter. Um, it's going to show off the colours a lot more. <clears throat> it's going to give us a lot nicer render. So that's rendered out now, and that looks really good. We've got the nice shadows under here. Still got a bit of darkness under there, which you could fix by um, repositioning the lights or anything like that. Um, so that's pretty much it, really. That's how you get the nice reflections and, you know nice lighting, nice shadows on your objects, you know, if you want to render off an object or um, at, like I'm going to quickly show you now, if you want to render like a, uh, maybe a text for a intro or something like that, if you get rid of everything you've got there, add a text, um, make sure the text is centered in the middle, um, I'm just going to change mine to phaser like that and change the depth to about 80. Um, change the font to a font that I use all the time which is this one um, so if we just add a colour to that you'll see it looks fine um, so like if you want to use it for an intro or something you want to put a big text in maybe make the text like explode or something whatever but you know for the lighting for it would be really nice like this um, and I'm just going to show you now how to make a really nice looking text while I'm already here. I mean, you see the shadows there, it all looks nice. And if you want to make a really nice text, what you need to do is make a text object like we've just made. Um, and you want to control C, control V to copy and paste it, so we've got two. And then you want to take one and add caps. Uh, add like a fillet cap to the star and the end which is the front and the back. Maybe change the radius up a bit to like 8 or something. Put a couple of extra steps in so it's a bit more curved. Um, and then what you need to do is take the one that you haven't added steps to, uh, caps to, sorry, and drag it forward very slightly. And we can just get that blue arrow. Um, drag it forward until you can see it like that. And then change the colour on that one to a different colour. And then when you render out, you'll have like um, a black black sides, black caps, and it'll go into like a blue text on the front. Um, and it is a really nice effect for text that you know you can use for anything really. Um, so you'll see here, it'll just change when it's finished rendering, um, just to give a quite a nice effect on the text really, as you can see there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it to be honest for this tutorial. Um, this is the first tutorial I've done on Cinema 4D, um, we're going to be making plenty more, um, so if you could subscribe that would be great, 
um, post a like if this has helped you out um, and you know leave a comment leave something in the comment section if there's something you don't know how to do on Cinema 4D but you'd like a tutorial on it leave a comment and I'll do my best to get it done as quick as possible so thanks for that guys and that's it for this tutorial